Okay, so here's one more problem about geometric vectors. And as you will see, before we even think of solving any kind of problem involving geometric vectors, problems of this type, we should always do three things. First, draw a picture of the situation. Second, draw what we know, or write down equalities that will capture what's true about the picture. And then third, write down what we want to show. So first, let's draw a picture. We're given two segments, A, B, and C, D. They're two segments in space. Again, it could be in the XY plane or in three-dimensional space. It doesn't matter. So suppose that segment A, B is this segment. So this is point A. This is point B. And then we have segment C, D. The segments may be of different lengths. They could also be not parallel. So we can draw, say, segment C, D this way. Suppose this is point C, and this is point D. What else do we know? A, B, and C, D are two segments with midpoints E and F, respectively. Therefore, E is the midpoint of A, B, so it cuts the segment into two equal parts. And the same goes to F and C, D. F is the midpoint of C, D, so it cuts the segment into two equal parts. The idea is, when you have assumptions like this, we will always try and prove the results using geometric vectors. So the idea is to translate what you know in terms of vector equalities. So if you think of it this way here, there's two ways of writing that E is the midpoint of AB using vectors. You can say the only way that E is the midpoint of AB is if the vector AE equals the vector EB. So the vector AE must equal the vector EB and this proves that E is the midpoint of AB. You could also write this as AE equals EB, which also equals a half of vector AB. That's equally true. So this equality of vectors captures the fact that E is the midpoint of segment AB. Well, the same goes for CD and F being the midpoint of that segment. So the vector CF has to equal the vector FD, which in turn has to equal one half of vector CD. And that's all we know. And here's what we want to show. So we want to show. And here it's quite simple. We're already given the equality as a vector equality, so there's no need to translate. But you'll see some other problems. We will have to translate what we want to show using equalities between vectors, but here we simply want to show that AC plus BD actually is twice of EF. And now we can forget this because we know the things that we know using vector equalities and we know what we want to show and we have our picture. So think of what this is saying. The vector AC would be this vector plus the vector, the vector BD, which is this vector right here. And the claim is that the result will be twice of the vector EF. Well, the idea is when you have an equality between two vectors, namely this one and this one, start with one side and try to get to the other side. So we'll start here, say, with the left-hand side. So here's our solution now. And the idea will be, as you will see as you solve these kinds of problems, is there's no recipe on how to systematically attack these problems in terms of an algorithm, but there is a way of being systematic if we use educated guessing. And the idea is, when you go from one side to the other, try and walk along paths, and you'll see what I mean in a second, try and walk along paths that will hit the vectors of interest. So we'll start with AC plus BD. So we have vector AC plus vector BD equals. Well, think of it. For vector AC, instead of walking from A to C directly, we are interested in the vector EF. So why not take a detour? We can walk from A to C directly, or 
we can walk from A to E. Then add from E to F. And finally add from F to C. So if you do AE plus EF plus AC, you've walked from A to C, and that's vector AC. And the idea behind this is that by doing so, we have introduced the vector of interest, which is the vector EF. Right? So the vector or vectors of interest won't magically appear in the equality. You have to make it happen. You have to walk along the proper path. And we can do the same thing with BD, right? Because BD is no longer on the right-hand side, so it has to go away as well. And let's again do the same thing by walking along vector EF. So instead of walking directly from B to D, we'll do BE plus EF, which is a vector of interest, and finally plus FC. And now we've walked from B to D. Oops, my bad. This is F D. The vector was B D. So we've walked from B to E, E to F, F to D. And so we've walked from B to D. And now the idea is, well, let's see what we have so far. Right? The vector E F, we're supposed to get 2 E F. But if you look at this vector, we have E F plus E F. Because addition commutes, we can put these two together, but EF plus EF is twice of EF. And let's see what we have now. We're left with four vectors, vector AE, FC, BE, and FD. Well, naturally, the vector AE and BE go together because they are in the same line segment. So we have plus vector AE, plus vector BE, these two go together. And naturally, vector FC and vector FD are in the same line segment, so these two go together. So plus FC plus FD. Well, let's see now. If the result is true, we're supposed to end up with 2EF. So these four vectors better go away, therefore better be the zero vector. Well, let's see. Look at now the picture in the assumption that vector AE equals vector EB. And you say, well, that's interesting, right? Vector AE is vector EB. But now think of it. What you have from here becomes a vector EB plus a vector BE. But if you do EB plus BE, if you think about it, you walk from E to B, then from B to E. So what you've done is you've walked from E to E. But if you walk from E to E, you've stayed stationary. You haven't walked anywhere. So this is just a single point. Hence, it is the zero vector, as we had hoped. And now you can actually see this if you go back to the actual picture, look at the line segment AB and E is the midpoint. Now AE, draw the vector AE, right? AE is this vector right here, pointing in this direction. This is AE. And the vector BE from B to E is now this vector. They both have the same length, but have opposite direction. So both are the negative of each other. So if you add a vector to its negative, of course, you end up with the zero vector. And the same is true of FC plus FD, right? FC is this vector right here from F to C. And FD is the vector of equal length because F is the midpoint of CD, but of opposite direction. So if you add to FC, FD, you return to the point of origin, therefore you've walked nowhere, so you get a zero vector, which you can show again by doing 
as we've done before, the vector fd, you can replace fd by cf, right? The vector fd is the same as the vector cf. So you get fc plus fd, we know is cf. But if you walk from f to c, then from c to f, you walk from f to f. But the vector ff, because the initial point and the terminal point is the same, is again the zero vector. So in the end, what are we left with? Well, we're left with 2ef plus the zero vector plus the zero vector. But if you add the zero vector to anything, nothing happens, right? The zero vector is the vector of zero length. So we're left with, quite simply, twice of vector EF, as desired. So indeed, AC plus BD is equal to twice of EF. And we're done.